Welcome Cougars to our first ever virtual welcome week. My name is Joanna Kelly and I work in the Office of Campus Life and Student Engagement. We hope you are all doing well during this challenging and interesting time and are so thankful you can join us. For those of you who are new students, Welcome Week is an opportunity for us to welcome back both our new and returning students. We have been having events throughout the week, but today on our last day is our community resource fair that will showcase all the wonderful resources that are in our local community outside of the classroom. We usually would be on campus with you all with our booths set up either in the cafeteria or on Cougar Way. So this is definitely different for us, but I hope it will be as informative and helpful like it always is. We are so excited to be joined today by staff from our local community organizations. Thank you all for taking the time to share what your organization is and how you can help support our students. These sessions will be recorded, so even if you miss a portion, you can come back to our page at www.canyons.edu slash welcome week 2020 to watch the videos once they are uploaded at a later date. Some housekeeping items to keep in mind are when you enter the Zoom session, you will automatically be muted. Panelists, please uh, unmute yourself when it is your turn to speak. We will be introducing you. Please note that this is an informational session. Please utilize the chat to ask questions and we will try our best to answer them in a timely manner. Panelists, please remember you have seven to 10 minutes to present your organization. Attendees, please feel free to screenshot or take a photo of each slide. Lastly, we will be available after the event is over to answer any general questions, as well as if you have any specific questions for any of our organizations, um, we will put you in a breakout room. So right now I'm going to present our first panelist, which is Kelly Ramnerine from Queer SCV. So take it away, Kelly. Was our slide not available? Uh, so we pre-made this slide. So if you needed us to um, make one for you, you could have sent it over. But um, oh, okay. we pre-made one for you, so I hope that works. Okay, um, cool. Well then, I guess I will read off of our slide in a different window. So basically, Queer CV is an LGBTQ group made by LGBT people in Santa Clarita who were responding to not having a community space or um, a place in Santa Clarita where we felt safe and happy to congregate. So basically what we did was in an effort to create safe, inclusive spaces for ourselves, we ended up creating a group that does that for other people as well. Um, so Queer CV meets on, um, we have events that recur monthly and then we also have several uh, ones that change up. So we meet on, two, on Thursdays and Sundays for our adult group. So on Thursdays at 7 p.m., we have events like game night, open forums, book clubs, that sort of thing. And they're always at 7 p.m. on a Thursday. And on second and fourth Sundays, we do queer movie watch parties at 6.30 p.m. Um, so those are, they rotate what movies we watch. And our newest thing that we do is we have a teen program because we've had so many under 18s reach out to us to ask if they can come to Queer CV, which at the time they couldn't. And now we can finally say, yes, you can. So we have partnered with the Santa Clarita Library to do um, events specifically for teenagers. So it's, seven, it's 13 to 17 um, through the Santa Clarita Library called the Teen Hangout. Um, and that is on Tuesdays at 4.30 p.m. Um, and this, another thing that we've done is we have a, um, we have a calendar that we've put together that lists all the LGBT 
events that were, are happening in Santa Clarita. So that includes events from the SCV LGBTQ Center, which does not exist yet, but is in the process of becoming a thing. Um, events from uh, the local GSAs, so CS COC's GSA is listed on our calendar, Saugus High School GSA is listed on our calendar, um, Canyon Country High School is listed on our calendar, and we also have the local PFLAGS um, events listed on our calendar. Um, yeah, so since we've had the pandemic happen, um, I had a bunch of cool pictures to show you on our slide, but um, since you can't see them, uh, since we had the pandemic happen, we've only been meeting online, and uh, those have been pretty well attended. Um, we've been having between like, I don't know, around like 10-ish to 14-ish people come to most of our online events. Um, and back in the day when we could meet in person, we did have, uh, we went on field trips, we went to the zoo, we went to the Gibbon Center, we went to the beach. We also did local things like hikes and sign making and self-defense clinics. Um, and really we do whatever our participants want us to do. Like if people have suggestions for events, we'll do them because the whole point is for us to find community and be able to do cool stuff we want to do. So let me see what you guys put up for us. Yeah. Yeah. This is our very like businessy language. Um, yeah, so uh, for we, yeah, I love that we now include teams. Um, most of our interaction we do through social media. Uh, Instagram is our most active one. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. And if you are in love with email, we do have a newsletter. Um, so you can sign up for that. And I don't know, is there anything else that I should say about us? Oh, yeah, we have a really cool thing coming up, which... Uh, hooray for social media. Um, so our book club book this month is Modern Herstory by Blair Imani. And in posting it online and tagging her, Blair offered to come to our book club. So Blair Imani will be attending our book club this month to in which we are reading her book. So that's a super cool thing that's happening. Yeah, we're very excited about that. I was like, what? Really? Yes, please. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is there any other things you should um, say about us? I guess just we're very inclusive. Um, yeah, basically our goal, goal is to be, um, we're kind of like inclusive, intersectional, equity-minded, justice-oriented, um, hence the sign-making and attending marches. Uh, our board is majority trans now, which is kind of cool. Um, so that's a thing. We try to have people involved in our decision making that come from multiple different identities so that we're not only representing one viewpoint. Um, and also, hi, I'm Kelly. I'm the president of Queer SCV. And this is Amanda. Hi, I'm Amanda. <laughs> I'm the secretary. <laughs> Although you disappeared right then. But yeah, so uh, Amanda and I are the co-founders. And then we have like a whole board of other people. Um, and all of that information is on our website if you want to see who we are and what we're up to, what we believe in, that kind of stuff. Um, that's also a place to find our calendar. Yeah. 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 Come hang out with us. Yeah. Come, <laughs> come to our event tonight and see what you think of it. Um, it should be fun tonight. We just play some games online and we usually have a good laugh and people feel safe. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, since we were hoping that there would actually be students at this event. Um, it looks like based on the participant number that the only participants currently here are the presenters. Uh, we scheduled a game night for tonight, which I think we have about like eight people RSVP'd right now, but um, we're hoping to grab some more from this event. So I don't know when this is being reposted or shared, uh, but if it's still uh, Thursday, September 3rd, when you're seeing this, um, there is a game night tonight at 7 p.m. on Zoom, and if you RSVP on Facebook, Instagram, or send us an email to RSVP, uh, we will message you the Zoom information. Yeah. I think that's pretty much it about us. Great. Thank you so much for sharing all that helpful information, and um, it's nice to see so many um, 
great events coming up, especially for tonight. Um, so next up is Anna Ramirez from the American Red Cross. Welcome. Hi, um, I am Anna Ramirez, the volunteer um, specialist with the American Red Cross. Um, since we are in a pandemic, um, there have been many changes into the, the way that we just do everyday things for the Red Cross. Um, there haven't been that many changes. We are still out in the community providing services um, to those that need it the most. Right now, we are actually on red flag alert for your area. So um, one of the things that we always try to remind the community is to be prepared. Um, one of the initiatives that we have with the Red Cross is called Prepare LA, where we go into different communities, provide them with preparedness information um, in case they have to evacuate their homes. We have very, uh, been very fortunate in the past um, to have worked with the College of the Canyons as a sheltering site. So thank you for that partnership. Um, we are eternally grateful for that. Um, so part of what this Prepare LA initiative does is it starts you know, the conversation of what if tomorrow there is a fire? What if tomorrow there is an earthquake? So um, it kind of goes over preparedness information. Um, it's things that you wouldn't even think about. A lot of people um, you know, think about preparing for, their, uh, for leaving their homes with their children and their spouses, but they don't even think about their pets just stuff that you might not think about. Um, we bring that to the table and kind of help make a plan um, for that. We also have our line of service, which is blood services. Um, and that line of service focuses obviously on donation. Um, we, we try to promote donating blood as much as we can in the community. And you know, the fact is that 38% of the population is eligible to donate and less than 10% of, of those people actually do. So. Um, just to give you some perspective, if somebody's in a motor vehicle accident, they can use up to like 10 or more pints of blood. So we definitely need um, the support of the community to, to make sure that the blood supply is there and it's healthy. Um, every two seconds, somebody in the U.S. needs blood. So, you know, we it's a constant need. Um, so we hope that the community will step up and if they are eligible to donate blood, that they do so. But if they're not, we can always utilize their gift of time. So we um, the Red Cross across the United States, 94% uh, are volunteers, and that's something not a lot of people know. But the majority of the people that you see out um, delivering our mission are volunteers. So these are people that are helping out at registration at blood drives, they're helping to deliver blood to uh, area hospitals. We have volunteers helping as volunteer medical screeners doing the little physicals before people can donate. Um, we, we do have a lot of opportunities besides blood services, so we always encourage the community to get involved. Um, we have um, disaster services. Um, these are volunteers that help with um, evacuation shelters. They can, um, you know, help to create partnerships in the community, um, help with um, community outreach booths, which looks a little bit different during COVID, but the message is still the same, be prepared. Um, we also have a home fire campaign. This is a program not a lot of people know about, but we actually go out into the communities and install smoke detectors free of cost. And while we're doing that, we also provide families with important information on how to create a plan for the evacuation of their home. If they have children in the home, we also go over how to talk to children about home fires. Um, part of that also entails creating a document packet of all of the important things that you should have with you when evacuating your home. Um, the, the home fire campaign is in an effort to reduce home fires as much as possible, but if home fires do happen, the Red Cross is also a resource to the community. The fire department will call the Red Cross after um, a home has been lost to a fire and the Red Cross will provide resources for that family until they figure out what the next move is. And that can involve lodging um, temporarily until, you know, they come to some sort of arrangement. So that is something that we have volunteers responding to 24-7. And that is actually one of the biggest jobs that the Red Cross does day to day. Um, we provide services to the armed forces. Um, we provide emergency communication between members of the U.S. Armed Forces and their loved ones. We provide um, family counseling, social services referrals, and sometimes in emergencies, we also provide financial assistance. Um, we do have a large volunteer base here in the Los Angeles region, and we're always looking for people that want to get more involved with the Red Cross. 
We are always very grateful for anybody that reaches out, whether it's just to get information or um, to learn more about the work that we do. Um, I feel like whenever I'm out in the community, people put us into two buckets. We're either collecting blood or we are responding to a disaster, but the Red Cross is so much more than that. Um, during non-pandemic times, we go to schools and provide preparedness class for children in a language that is age appropriate. Um, we have a couple of other initiatives in place right now to ensure the safety of our volunteers. So volunteering with the Red, with the Red Cross right now is a safe thing to do. Um, and if anybody has any questions or is interested in volunteering with the Red Cross, they can always go to our website. There is a, um, a position finder where you can put what sort of things interest you, whether you want to be face to face with somebody when you're delivering our mission or if you want to do behind the scenes work. Um, I will note though that right now, because of the pandemic, most of our volunteer opportunities are out in the field and, and helping individuals. So that is just something to keep in mind. Um, we also have various schools and various professors that are working with the Red Cross for students that need to do service learning. So if you need hours of community service for service learning, that is something that we also do. It is a meaningful way to give back and, you know, putting everything that you're learning in school into practice. So that is that is our way of um, working with schools. And if anybody has any questions, I am always available. Um, my email is not on there, but it is ananana.ramirez at redcross.org. Um, so I'm looking at the chat now and there are a couple of questions. Should we hold these off till the end? Yes. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, so I will answer questions at the end. And that is everything about the Red Cross. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Anna, for that uh, vital information. Um, yeah, I know I recently um, donated myself, but it's, it's good to know that you have a lot more comprehensive services um, available to people. Okay, so moving on. Uh, our next presenter is from the Los Angeles County Registrar Recorder, and the presenter is Jean Vasquez. Welcome. Okay. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Let me know if it's like breaking up because um, I think. Okay, so everything sounds clear. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, great. Well, hi. Um, thank you so much for having me. Um, this is, I think, the first time we I haven't been available or. Um, been at College of the, of the Canyons for Welcome Week, maybe this would have been the third year I would have been there for um, uh, for the college. But unfortunately, obviously, we can't all be there right now. But there's no reason that we can't meet together anyway. So I'm glad I can still share information, especially with the primaries coming up. So again, thank you, Joanna, for introducing me. My name is Jean. I work with the LA County Registrar Recorder. Um, right now, we are more than uh, ever. Oh, sorry. Um, we are more than ever just trying to make sure we get the word out about the elections. Um, no matter what, uh, we are. Um, despite the fact that you know there is COVID, we are trying our best to provide us neighbors as possible. Um, even if we are in the LA County doing the whole vote by mail. Um, due to the due to the fact that uh, this board of supervisors agreed that it would be best to send everybody a vote by mail because of the circumstances, correct? So then um, we are sending everybody a vote by mail, even if we are having vote centers available all throughout the county. Uh, we are trying to aim at the same number of um, the same number of vote centers, just like we did for the primaries. Um, one thing we are also increasing is that we are uh, increasing our vote by mail drop-off boxes. We will double that number to instead of just 
200 to about maybe uh, uh, over, not maybe, but in fact, over 400 drop-off boxes. So this includes the fact that they these drop-off boxes for your um, uh, will be available at every vote center, but they will also be located at every uh, public county space or even city space. So that means uh, the libraries, the museums, there's libraries, museums, and what else? We're thinking about the convention center as well. Um, another, I don't know if uh, you have all noticed, but we did come up with a big, big, um, we did have this, one thing we really, really got to um, do this time around is that we actually have the Dodger Stadium and two, three other large, larger stadiums available as vote centers. So that's really exciting. Um, Dodger Stadium, for example, uh, they planned on opening a new space uh, this summer for the public. However, obviously, because of the conditions, they weren't able to open it, right, as and announce it as much as possible. But because now will be center, the public will still have a chance to see it then. Of course, in limited numbers, you know, um, not so many people all at once, but uh, the public will still be able to see that those vote centers at these stadiums. Um, so one thing I want to emphasize is that the deadline to register to vote is October 19th. So if you haven't registered yet, then make sure you are registered. If you're not going to be 18 by the by October 19th, but you will be 18 before the election, um, and in that period of October 19th to November 3rd, make sure that you are registered to vote so that by the time you turn 18 by the uh, election day, you can still vote. Um, if you still missed that window of registering before the deadline, of course, one of the put this year was also conditional voter registration. So you can register on the same day that you go and vote, but you have to have to make sure you uh, take your California ID, your driver's license, of course, to prove that you are, are 18 or if it is your first time voting, right? Um, and of course, all this information is available on our website as is shown on the screen for lavote.net. So the information vote for vote centers are available on the website, but they aren't. the list is not available yet. That should be available next month already. Um, the list of the drop-off boxes are also going to be available on the website. Again, that's not available yet till next month. And another thing is, um, let me see. Anytime you want to keep updated, just we urge you to follow our social media accounts, which are on Twitter, Twitter, Instagram, um, YouTube, but more than anything, Instagram, Instagram, and Twitter. So we have been more active on those social media uh, uh, platforms to keep the public informed. Now that you know we're not out as much as uh, we used to be in outreach, like the Welcome Week, for instance. So. Now we're just trying to get you know the information out as much as possible through yes Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, what's another thing? Um, so general election October nineteenth. The vote centers and drop off boxes list on our website. Um, if okay, so I see here that um, Joanna put the professional registrations, marriage licenses, and ceremonies, notary, public oath, and bond. Those are all, those are still available, except you have to call ahead of time and make an appointment. Unfortunately, you're not allowed to just show up and uh, without an appointment. Uh, so if you do need any of these services, please call ahead of time. Go to our website on lavote.net and make sure that you have all the, um, the information or paper you need, okay? Um, so again, I can't emphasize enough, please follow on Instagram. Uh, for any more uh, updates, uh, election resources on our website, as always, I'm just going to say LAVOTE.net, 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 October 19th deadline. And that's pretty much, that wraps up my video. <laughs> and if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Great. Thank you, Jean. Um, that information is very important, especially with this upcoming election this year. Um, so thank you very much for your time. So moving on, our next presenter is from the National Alliance on Mental Illness, also known as NAMI, and our presenter is Z Jankworth. Welcome. Welcome. 
Hello everyone, my name is Z. I'm gonna turn off my video because sometimes it causes my speaking to get messed up. So I'm gonna turn that off right now and just tell you about the National Alliance on Mental Illness. The National Alliance on Mental Illness is a um, mental health organization that was started by families more than 40 years ago. And there's so many people that do not know about us. We offer free education programs, free training programs, free support groups, and many, many resources. So um, it's easy for you to, uh, there's the website on, our, on the slide there I see and our phone number. We have ongoing uh, on the first and third Tuesday of each month, there is a family support group. Uh, we all know that there's such a stigma attached to mental health conditions and that's what our advocacy and our education is about. We want very much to reduce the stigma attached to mental health disorders. Um, especially now during this time of the pandemic, there's so many more people that are isolating, going through some high anxiety and uh, difficulties. And so we hope that they will reach out for help and that's why we try to raise public and raise awareness for mental health. Um, College of the Canyons has been super in helping us to do that. We are always present on campus when we're allowed to be there with our different, for Welcome Week and for uh, other events that happen uh, for the students. Um, we have a family support group happening on the first and third Tuesdays of each month at 7 p.m. Coming up next Tuesday on September 8th, and everybody is welcome, we have Ask the Psychiatrist evening. That's a place where you can come and your family can come to ask a psychiatrist, a very lovely, great guy, who is offering his time and will answer any questions you might have about behaviors, about medications, uh, if you have a mental health condition. Please join us September 8th. And if you, get, um, if you will send me your, or inquire at our email, there on the, at our website or at our phone number there on the slide, you can find out more about that. It will be, of course, a virtual meeting and it will be, um, at, it'll start actually at 6.30 p.m. till eight. And some of you know Mr. Schallert who works at the campus uh, in Valencia. And he and the doctor are the ones that are supporting and helping us to do this event. That happens generally once a month. We have um, free education programs coming up. All of those things can be found on our website. If you have family members or loved ones that have a mental health condition and you just want to be supportive and helpful and understand mental health conditions, please try to investigate the education programs. They are free. That's how I got started as a volunteer with NAMI was by, uh, I have a loved one with a mental health condition. I didn't understand it. I didn't know that was the case so often. Uh, Sadly, with our youth, sometimes they turn to substance abuse, alcohol, or drugs to help them to feel better. And um, I focused mainly on that at, at the beginning because I didn't know there was a depressive disorder or a mood swing disorder underneath that initial condition. So um, most um, people that, families that I run into, we, uh, it's very classic and um, ordinary in a way, 
for people to turn to substance and then sadly some of them do get addicted. We do uh, talk about suicide prevention and sadly when people don't get the help that they need, uh, you know, we hope that you will join some of our groups because we will talk about knowing the signs for uh, suicide and not being afraid to reach out for yourself or to help someone, a friend who might be isolating or uh, you suspect could be going through a deep depression. Um, we have our phone number there on the uh, slide. Also, um, a lot of times the um, there's bullying that happens or in the LGBT community, uh, there is people that are suffering from depression and isolation and we learn, we need to learn compassion and empathy. Um, we have a support group for people that have conditions and actually last year there was a group on campus and it may happen again this year, it's called Connections, Connections, and that group, um, we do have an active group happening on Monday evenings, and we have one on Saturday mornings. So if you yourself need a support group and you're having difficulty with isolation or just talking to people about your fears and your anxiety, um, maybe some trauma you've gone to, gone through, please investigate the connections group. That's for you. And the group for family support groups is for your families. And there's a education programs that are for families and education programs for the clients and the persons with the mental health condition themselves. Um, we, um, I'm hoping, I want to, uh, make sure I cover all the bases here. Um, I guess that's it. We have support groups and our contact information is there on the slide. If you have questions or you want to look further into um, how you can maybe volunteer with us or take advantage of some of our programs. And remember, everything is free of charge. Uh, our support groups, our resources, and our education programs. Um, thank you for your time, and I hope I've been helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Z. Uh, you've definitely been very helpful. Um, thank you so much for your work in um, trying to destigmatize uh, mental health and encouraging people to get the help that they need. Um, Okay, so on to our next organization is Parents, Families, and Friends of Lesbians and Gays. And our presenters today are Peggy and Jeff Stable. Welcome. Hey, thank you so much, Joanna. Hi there. Um, first, my name is Jeff Stabile. I'm the president of uh, PFLAG. And this is my wife, Peggy. Uh, we co-founded P flag a um, little over 32 years ago uh, when our son initially came out to us uh, we were looking for some place to get some answers to see what's happening and uh, the only place we uh, knew of was down in LA so for the first couple of years we would drive down to LA and be part of the uh, P flag organization down there uh, but in 1988, uh, an event happened up here that kind of told us that we really needed to do something to bring P flag up to the Santa Clarita Valley. So Jeff mentioned um, our son came out to us, this was back in 1986, and provided us with information about the P flag organization. It is a support group primarily for parents and young people and people of all ages actually, who are going through the coming out process and, and feel that they need more information. So as Jeff mentioned back in 88, uh, an incident occurred here in town that was beyond homophobic. 
we had a, uh, a lesbian teacher who was coming up to address an extension class from the University of Phoenix. It was a class of teachers who were learning how to better service the marginalized students in their classroom. And her topic was how to make your campuses safe for your LGBTQ students. Uh, unfortunately, the community did not like that, and there were over 400 people who congregated on the apron in front of St. Stephen's Episcopal Church, where the class was being held, and they were there to protest, uh, claiming that we had no, no uh, gay people in Santa Clarita. So that was basically what led us to uh, start meetings in our, in our living room for the first uh, five or six years. So um, PFLAG uh, initially stood for parents, families of lesbians and gays, but has expanded to parents, families, friends, and allies of LGBTQ um, community. Uh, our meetings are held on the fourth Wednesday of each month um, at St. Stephen's in Sperling Hall. Um, Except for this period when we're doing Zoom meetings yeah. like everybody else. Um, and we generally um, have about 25 people on average that uh, show up each month for the uh, meetings. And some have gone through the coming out process, the family has gone through it, the individual has gone through it. Other ones were, have just found out about their uh, uh, child or sibling or friend. Uh, so we have quite a mixture of people that uh, that come to the meetings, but everybody that comes is not under any pressure to talk at all. If they want to just come to listen, they can just listen. Um, if they decide they want to share, uh, everything you know stays in the meeting. Um, we generally meet as a group of 25 for like the first 10 minutes or so. And then we break into smaller groups of about uh, six to eight. Um, and that lasts probably 35, maybe 40 minutes. Um, and then we come back as a group again and just kind of talk about, um, you know, some, share some of the feelings, things that we may have heard that uh, were helpful. Um, um, and that that's done in the uh, uh, in the large group meeting again, but again everything is confidential in the meeting. Um, we have been meeting for, as I say, over thirty two years, and um, the programs have grown, and we've done a bit of outreach to the community. Yeah, so PFLAG's primary mission when it was first founded was support for folks who are going through the coming out process and their families. However, now it's a, a three-pronged mission. Uh, we also have a mission of education. So what we do in our PFLAG Santa Clarita as outreach is to have provided all of our schools, every counseling office in the high school and junior high school, every, every counselor's office, I should say, as well as the principals in all of our elementary schools have received packets uh, that are uh, filled with booklets from PFLAG National that explain everything there is to know about uh, those folks who are, are finding themselves to be uh, in the LGBTQ community. So they're extraordinarily helpful for educating the educators we also educate through um, articles that we write to the newspaper, sometimes articles rebutting the misinformation that's being given. Other times there are articles that are just informational about issues that are challenging to our LGBTQ youth, particularly the bullying aspect. We also uh, are advocates for our kids and um, we work towards legislation that is going to be fair and um, equal, provide our kids with a fair and equal shot at everything that their, their uh, peers have. 
Um, we've had several activities uh, that we have done. We reinstituted our Pride event uh, four years ago, and we showed the movie Trevor, which was about a young boy who is coming to grips with his gayness and his suicidal ideation. Um, so that was our very first uh, Pride, Pride event in recent years. We had them years ago, but there was a lapse. Then the second year, we had our 30th anniversary, and Greg Luganis was our guest of honor, and we showed his uh, biography back on board and had a, a, over 100 people show up to that. Those two events were held in St. Stephen's Church. The third year, we partnered with Queer SCV and with Bo Boston Scientific Prides Group, and we put on a picnic in the park, which was our first full-blown community event for Pr uh, Pride Month. And it was a huge success with well over 200 people participating in our picnic. This year we were in a quandary as to what to do because we didn't have um, the ability to, to congregate together. So Boston Scientific and we, PPLAC had been chatting about uh, having donations to our libraries of LGBTQ themed books for youngsters uh, from preschool through middle school. There is quite a bit on the shelves for the teenagers, but these groups are, are sorely missing materials to read. Um, so we ended up putting that on hold and then uh, our partners had their funds frozen, so we weren't going to be able to purchase the books. So we ended up hosting a community book drive, which was a huge success. In two weeks in June for our Pride event, we were able to um, have 139 books donated. And on uh, two, Wednesday of next week, we are going to be delivering those books to the library. We have 13 different titles. Three of each of those titles will go to every one of our uh, community libraries. So we're really proud of that outreach. Um, and that is about it for PFAC. Yeah, the, uh, the important thing we do is we've been uh, looking to uh, work with corporate partners to help spread the news. And that's where Boston Scientific contacted us about two years ago, because they would primarily go down to LA and do things where they want to do something up here. Uh, and it's been working with their great group. Um, and then just recently, we, we've been invited to Northrop Grumman um, ERG group, which is an employee resource group, to make a presentation next month for their meeting. So we're always trying to reach out and uh, uh, expand the presence of PFLAG to let people know that we're here to listen and to help anyone that we can. And thank you so much for the very, very beautiful slide you put up for us. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you both for uh, sharing your story and um, all the work that you've been doing and continue to do. Uh, we do appreciate that. And last but not least is our organization, Resilient Heart. And our presenter today is Sarah DiBella. Welcome. Thank you, Joanna. My name is Sarah DiBella, and I'm a co-founder of Resilient Heart. And uh, I would like to turn off the video as well so that we don't have any gag um, during the presentations. So what I'd like to share today, Resilient Heart is a nonprofit organization in, in our Santa Clarita Valley. We are dedicated to developing a lifelong emotional resilience in the minds and hearts of children and adults. Before the pandemics, we have many events and activities throughout the greater uh, LA area from the libraries to school campuses, and we are at SCOC. Thank you for inviting us back virtually this year, as well as um, um, expos and Pasadena's and libraries, and you name it. So we'll be there 
and to provide emotional resilience trainings face to face. Now we transition our training to online webinars and online and phone coachings. And what is really exciting, uh, what we're developing is um, a one million resilient heart young heroes uh, mentoring and training programs. And today I'd like to um, kind of tag on a little bit about what is this programs and I'd like to invite you to be part of it. I'd like to start out with um, a quote from Dale Carnegie's uh, famous American writer. Inaction breeds doubts and fears. Action breeds confidence and courage. If you want to conquer fear, do not sit home and think about it. Go out and get busy. And that's basically what Resilient Heart is all about. We are always busy. Um, for this program, we are looking for no experience needed, however, it's in the college um, age, and you like to explore, you're open-minded and eager to lead, um, fostering passions for others, and always have um, um, enjoy the participating in events and activities and have passion to share and learn. So what our programs is all about is that because of our transition to the public's now uh, much more to uh, mentoring and trainings, um, what we provide here is um, for emotional resilience trainings that includes mindfulness, guided meditations, health and wellness education, yoga, and et cetera. And within these programs, uh, you're connecting with the community leaders, and that's what we do in the past with business, uh, local business owners and uh, local and state government official. Um, there are many resources and leaderships and individual consultations um, coming from the backgrounds of uh, finance, um, we have expertise on marketing, branding, finance, and business network. Um, what we really like to help you is to put an action plan together um, to identify a clear purpose in life and release the power within yourself so that you can reach your goals and fulfill your dreams. And uh, we all deal with this um, pandemic and the traumas of uh, not only the pandemic, and we have recent school shootings and the wildfires here. Um, statistics always show that there was an increase in alcohol, drugs, and substance abuse, mental illness in young people in our community. So we hope that um, you will come to learn about us and join us and the skills to build resilience, um, be coherent and physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, so that empower yourself to overcome these hardships and thrive. Um, you, you can see on the slides how to reach us. Um, you can check us out on our website and also uh, via emails and um, call Texas. Uh, we are here for you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Sarah. Um, and also, I wanted to thank you, all the panelists, for taking the time uh, to share with us all this valuable information. Also, thank you to all of you who are tuning into this session this afternoon. We also will be hanging out uh, after this, so please feel free to uh, stay to ask us any general questions or if you have any specific questions for any of the panelists, please let us know in the chat and um, we will definitely take care of that for you. Otherwise, we will see you in the spring for our next welcome week. Have a good day and um, have a great weekend also. <laughs>